Meanwhile, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro plans to expand the country's social programs. But as we just saw with Venezuela's struggling economy, where will that funding come from? CCTV's Rochelle Acufo spoke with former U.S. Ambassador to Venezuela, John Maisto, to find out. First of all, I don't think you can talk about Venezuela's social programs without talking about today's very difficult reality in Venezuela. There's a political reality, there's an economic reality, and there's a social reality. The first year of the Maduro government has been, I don't think it's an exaggeration to call it a disaster. Why? Look at the political side. You have great political unrest after an election which was so close. It's a country that's divided right in half politically. And on the economic side, in spite of having oil revenues, the economy has been very badly managed. I don't think there's any economist in the world that would say, well, the Venezuelans are doing okay on their economic policies. They're not, and they know it. So comes the social piece. And sometimes political leaders in order to avoid dealing forthrightly on the political side and on the economic side, come up with social stuff to focus on because the social stuff has both a political and an economic piece to it. Unless he deals with the economic side and the political side, the social side uh, isn't going to work the way they want it. Now, you used the word disaster, which is a, a strong word. Yes, it is. So that's his first year. What can we expect then from his second year? The country could begin to turn around if some attention was paid to the political opposition, as opposed to an authoritarian approach, which is my way or the highway, as we say in English. And that's what the government is saying. N will not deal with the opposition at all. Uh, on the economic side, um, there are some basic decisions to be made. Some have begun to be made, but it's, it's a top-down command economy. There should be more room for the private sector to function normally, to meet the economic demands. How can it be that a country as rich as Venezuela lacks foodstuffs on the shelves and basic needs for the, for the population? Now, speaking of that, in terms of the, the high prices, the inflation, what can be done to improve that? The president could do a combination of working with the political opposition to reduce the pressures. Why are the students in the streets? Why is the opposition unhappy? The students are in the streets because they don't like the cost of living, they don't like the inflation, there are economic hardships, these are young people coming out of high school and college and not knowing what's going to happen uh, in terms of job opportunities. Why, on the political side, why is it that you have elected mayors and elected representatives of the Congress in jail? I mean, if you call yourself a democracy, how can you do that and shut the door? It's really not too much for the opposition to ask for its political leaders to be freed from jail for there to be some respect for human rights and not beating up on university students in the streets, that's not too much in the 21st century in a country like Venezuela. Now, in terms of focusing on these social programs, as you said, as sort of a distraction, still there are one in 10 Venezuelans living in extreme poverty. What, what is the right way to tackle it? Um, you know, <sighs> Venezuela has been a country in which, after President Chavez took over, the three main issues that he had to deal with uh, that he talked about were poverty and corruption and the huge bureaucracy that Venezuela has. People cannot believe the size of the Venezuelan bureaucracy, which is typical of an authoritarian system. Sixteen years later, the main problems are poverty, <laughs> bureaucracy, and corruption that go with it. Everybody knows this. What can be done? A combination of taking the political bull by the horns, sitting down, 
negotiating, compromising, creating space for the private sector to function, um, and uh, allowing the economy to, to some space. Extreme poverty is there. There should be a safety net. It should, the system should function better. But if the overall economy doesn't function better, then the attention to the poor, the extremely poor, is going to suffer as well.